everybody, welcome to Lose the Manchester Derby 3-1 and look, that's a really tough one to take. Um, I do think they were robbed, I'll explain why for you. I know some people don't agree with me but I'm, I'm not changing my mind and I've actually took a couple of minutes on purpose to watch them back and see if the red tented glasses need removing. Um, but before I talk about why we were robbed and I thought two of Man City's goals were totally preventable by officials who just seem to be so inconsistent and it's the second Manchester derby in a row where I think an, a ridiculous decision has done us over. Hoyland on Rodri at Old Trafford, never seen a penalty given like it before, never seen one since and then today... Um, even in the last minute, he gives a foul on Delo for the same thing that happens to Rashford. Whether it's soft or not, whether Gary Neville thinks it's a foul or not, they always get given. When you're outside the box and somebody pulls you back, you take a tumble, it's a foul. It should have been given. It wasn't given. They go up the other end and they score. And as for the Edison one, I've, I've, what, I've, at no point am I going to be changing my mind on this because I keep watching it. I keep watching it and all I see is, and watch it back, all I see is Edison out of control, off the ground, two feet, wide open, stood up, gets the ball and then cleans out Ganacho. You do that in the centre circle, the crowd would go crazy and it'd, get, it'd be a red card. And all people are saying to me is, it's a good tackle, he gets the ball. It's a good tackle. And I'm like, but he, look... Watch it back. If you think that we don't get, that that's not a foul and we don't get yellow cards and red cards for that, I don't know where I've been for the last six years. It, it's a last man tackle. He gets the ball, but he's out of control. His legs are like a pair of scissors. He wraps them around the player afterwards. He cleans him out. His studs are up. I, I think it's a penalty. I do. I just don't think they've got the balls to give that in the modern game. And I'd call anybody a, hip a hypocrite who says we haven't seen fouls given for that. And then Amrabat at the end just gives him a three goal. So I think all three goals are really preventable. Really preventable. But look, we've lost the game. Uh, you know, there's no point in talking about officials. This has been going on all season. It's happened to other clubs. It's happened to Liverpool. It's happened to Arsenal. We've lost the game. And I think we've got to look at ourselves as well. And we'll do player ratings. Mark every player out of 10, six being the average. Um, I think the first thing I would say is that I said before the game... For Manchester United to win this game, every player has to play a 7 out of 10. You know, you're up against the best team in the world at their place in a derby. If you want to win this game, every player has got to put in at least a 7 out of 10. In 2008, Manchester United won the Champions League and the Premier League. And we should have won the FA Cup. Dodgy refereeing decision against Portsmouth knocked us out. They went on to win it. In that season, with Rio and Vidic and Ronaldo and Rooney and Tevez and Carrick and Giggs and Scholes and Van der Sar, in that season, at Old Trafford, in the February, we lost 2-1 to Manchester City, who had the greats of Richard Dunn, Dieter Hamann and Vassal and Benjani scored. So, you know, it's not impossible to go and get a result in a Manchester derby away from home. And we've done it in the past. But what, ha what has to happen, what has to happen is you have to have 11 players that play well. I actually think that I, th I predicted 2-0 to Man City. It finished 3-1. So I, I predicted it right. I, I thought Man City would be two goals better than us. We've not been stuffed 5 or 6 nil, which I don't think was ever going to happen. Some people predicted that. I don't think it was ever going to happen. Um, we've, we've lost 3-1, 2 nil, whatever you want to call it. But absolutely categorically you've got to call out some individual players because when we do the player ratings not everybody got a 7 out of 10 and if you go into a derby and you can look in the mirror and you've not given a 7 out of 10 then you're responsible I thought Ten Hag got his tactics absolutely spot on absolutely spot on we are up against the team that has got no injuries that can keep the ball all game and that was always going to happen we needed to be compact we needed to be organised and we needed to break well. And in the first 20 minutes, we could have been 2 or 3 nil up. Rashford scores a brilliant goal. One-on-one, -on -one, he should have done better. And then on the back post, he should have done better. For 20 minutes, it was fine. They were having a lot of the ball. We were well organised. We were breaking well. And from 20 minutes, it stopped. The defence carried on doing its job. The midfield carried on being compact. Scott McTominay disappeared for the whole game. 
Bruno Fernandes became the Bruno Fernandes of the last month where he just can't string a pass together. Ganacho and Rashford faded out of the game. We, I don't think we constructed a decent breakaway attack after the 20th minute. And that's why we've lost the game. Because there are bad refereeing decisions in there. Of course there are. Whether we disagree or agree on them, I think there are. I think, you know, they scored straight after the Rashford foul. They scored straight after what should have been a penalty. And Amrabat made a big mistake. If I'm a defender, I'm fuming. But I'd also be in the dressing room as the manager or as somebody like Raphael Varane. And I'd say... We've worked our arse off today. I know I've put in a 7 out of 10. I know Johnny Evans did. I know Delo did. I know Maynou did. I know Casemiro did. You fucking didn't. You didn't. You didn't. And you didn't. You can't come to the Etihad and defend with, you know, 18% possession and do nothing after 20 minutes going forward. And I'll tell you what, I saw us have the ball in positions where we could have played people in and you're doing little fucking flick, flicks and shitty passes, that is why we've not got something from this game today. Because despite what I thought was some ridiculously, inconsistently incompetent officiating, and an absolute, you know, Amrabat's done. You know, I was willing to give him a chance. I mean, that that's just... I, I don't know what to say. And Anthony as well. That, 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 those, those two off the bench, I mean... Look, you've got to make substitutes. You have. But fucking hell. You know, 3-1-2-1 makes no difference. But 3-1 makes it look a lot more convincing than it really was. 2-1 would have been the right score, I think, based on, you know, the referees of Pratt. But 3-1, you know, all the hard work of the defenders and the midfield out the window because Amrabat is fucking useless. I mean, why does he not just boot the kick the ball away? But... Um, no, I, I, amongst all of it, I think the most important thing that I, that I would say is that there are look. There's not there's not one size there's not one size that fits all here. Man City are a fantastically good footballing side. We already know this. Um, I've not seen a team go to Chelsea, uh, Man City in a long time, and you know, even make them look partially and uncomfortable with possession. So I'm not really bothered about that. I would have done exactly the same tactics that Ten Hag did. And I thought it worked well for 20 minutes. But lo and behold, again, United's big problem is we can't get 11 players to play well at the same time. Um, they absolutely let us down in the front four, four positions. Um, and look, I like Ganacho. Rashford scored a good goal. I like Bruno, but it's not acceptable. It's The performance is so bad. And... McTominay was really bad, but we had to play him because, you know, set pieces we knew were going to be important. But the problem is, it's like, I almost just think, I wish we were playing Everton tomorrow because there's nothing you can do. Like, there, there isn't anything you can do. I look at the bench. You've got um, the young defender. You've got Kambwala. You've got Forson. You've got Ahmad. You've got Collier. And then you've got Anthony and Amrabat who get brought on and they're fucking shit. So I'm like, it's so frustrating. And I actually saw somebody say, you know, well, it's not acceptable. I know we've got injuries, but it's not acceptable. We should be doing better than that. And I'm like, but how? How are we going to do any better than that? Like, look at the bench. You're talking like, oh, you know, we shouldn't pick McTominay and Bruno because we should be picking Mount and uh, Ericsson. Well, Ericsson's been rubbish for for weeks. Mount's not fit. We've got no strikers. We've got no left back. I mean, look, if we're being really harsh, I think it's a foul on Rashford. But Lindelof has got to do a lot better on Foden. You can't let Foden cut in and shoot on his left foot. It's crap defending. But it's a centre-back playing at left back. I don't, you know, he's got to bring Anthony on because Ganacho's not having a good game. He's got to take Rashford off because he's not having a good second half. And you, then you've got to bring Amrabat on and you've got to bring Anthony on and they offer absolutely nothing. And you can't be throwing kids on in a game like that. It's not fair. Like the bench is just got nothing. And, 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 and you know, look, I think against Fulham, it, it was massively disappointing for different reasons. It was a it was a shit show. But I think today, I think Ten Hag tactically couldn't have done anything else. People will talk about possession, but then they're, they're going to pretend that Bruno wasn't fucking useless, that McTominay wasn't a ghost that Ganacho and Rashford really struggled. I, I watched that second half and there was at least five occasions where I felt we could have got into a position to have a shot and we didn't. Um, 
We were so bad in the final third. And actually, look, I don't take any comfort in this, but it, it sort of proves the point of last week. The reason Fulham kept breaking on us at Old Trafford was because the front four kept giving the ball away. And then in this game, the front four kept giving the ball away. At, at some point, we've got to look at that front four and go, they're not keeping hold of the ball and taking the pressure off the midfield and the attack uh, and the defence. They lose the ball all the time. And, it, and it's so frustrating. You can't do that. The thing that Chelsea did really well when they got a draw was that they defended well. And we did that. We defended well. We did what Chelsea did. But what Chelsea did on the break was they were a threat every time. They, they were clean with the ball. They looked after the ball. They played the right passes at the right time. And they created chances. And then they had something to hold on to. And United were trying to hold on with one goal from the 20th minute. It's too long. It's way too long. It should have been 2-1. Amrabat's a prat. But it's still too long. It's like playing the chase. We didn't have enough in the bank that they weren't going to go past us. And I, I really think that United's front four at the moment is a massive problem. They give the ball away too much. And it's, it's a massive drop-off without Rasmus in the team. It really, really is. Um, look, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the result is really, really frustrating. Um, you know, but I've got to look back and say Haaland should have scored before half time. Um, it's, it, it's difficult. It's difficult. And, and, and when Rashford scores that goal, you think, you know, maybe we're going to get something here. Um, but it, but it would have been, it would have been, it probably wouldn't have been right if we got something because it's a little bit like Anfield. You can't just go and get away with it. Um, more than once a season and I think we would have been getting away with it um, but honestly I, I think this is if, I, if, if I'm if i Sir Jim Radcliffe and I'm watching that as a Man United fan I'm not looking at the manager based on that I'm not because it's not it's, to me that I don't know what, what else he can do I, I don't know what else he can do with the players he's got available I mean as I say when we do, when we do the player ratings You've got to play well in a game like that. I think every Man City player played well. Every one of them played well. And half of our team didn't play well. And look, I, I applaud the effort. I applaud the unity. I mean, that's an improvement. I mean, if, if, you, if you want to take positives from it, there was a real camaraderie. There was a real organisation. And we never at any point looked like we were going to capitulate like we did at Anfield a year ago. But it's the performance. And... and I just, I don't know. I, I I felt Rashford should have ran at Kyle Walker a few times, but didn't have the confidence because of his pace, which is weird because Rashford's fast. I think Ganacho really struggled on that left hand on that right hand side. As I said, Bruno. I mean, look, he played a game again. There's no one else to play, but it wasn't good. And McTominay, I, I just I felt he was like almost like ten men apart from set pieces. Like Rodri, he, he just lost him all the time. So. Look, it's, it's, it's hard at the moment. It really is hard. And it's not going to get any easier, is it? I mean, Rasmus is meant to be back at the weekend against Everton. And we need him back. But we're really, we're really, we're, we're really struggling, aren't we? Like, we're really struggling. And, and with Liverpool in the cup and, you know, in the league. And we've got to play Arsenal in the league as well. These games are going to be really tough when we come up against well-organised teams at the top of the league. Um, but... I do still hark back to the fact that we were well organised at the back and we were compact and we didn't really concede many good chances apart from the Haaland goal. And then obviously the, the, the Foden goal, the second one, I think Anana should save it. The first one is a brilliant goal, but Lindelof is naive. And the third goal is a mistake by Amrabat. So I thought we defended well. I think as an attacking unit, we give away the ball too much. We don't take care of the ball and I'm tired of saying it. I'm tired of saying it. It was the same against Fulham. It was the same against Forrest. And it was the same today. The same players not looking after the ball. When we look after the ball, like we did in the first 20 minutes, we were creating chances. And then it just completely stopped. I don't know why. Um, ben says, Delo was our best player. Uh, Raja says, the game changed when Evans came off and the defence lost the shape. Manu came off, not McCasper. Led to midfield being overrun, says Raja. Let's be real, there was no scenario where we beat City. Key players missing in action. This is the best we could hope for. A lot of mistakes, but alas, next time, says Presh. Amrabat was City's best player. I mean, I just... I, I, Jalal, you're, I was fuming 
I was absolutely fuming. Um, it's just, look, you want players to do well, but we spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of time and we passionately invest in our team. Just kick the fucking ball out. Like, I, in a game like, it's, un, it's unforgivable that. I, I just absolutely pissed me off. Um, Eric Ten Hag in, came into the game with a plan, but the players let him down, says Alec. Rashford cannot stay down, got to come back hit there, says Daniel. Um, add that to the list of charges against them, 116, says Dara. In my opinion, doing the basics right today, beat Hollywood flicks and passes, says Reagan. Yeah, look, I, just, I just don't think our attack performed very well. It's not a penalty, got the ball, grasping at straws, says still, uh, still, uh, Stephen. Uh, edging during watch-alongs is not good for the blood pressure, Mark, says Gary Barlow. Okay, um... Uh, got what we deserved, mate. Poor tactics. Yeah, you don't know football, Beckle, with all due respect. Poor tactics. What what, what, what are you going to do then? Play a high line and try and pass your way through them? Uh, if you're talking about tactics today, you haven't, got a, you haven't got a Scooby, mate. Like, There's nothing else you can do. I'd love to say that there was, but there was nothing else we could do. Bruno needs to be dropped for Mount when he's back. Mount doesn't go for stupid passes or shots, says um, Mini. If that was a robbery, then I'm going to the bank, says Raja, uh, says uh, NP. Welcome to mem Members Club, Raja. I don't understand how it wasn't at least a corner. Then they go up and score corruption, says David. Uh, can't wait for... Um, yeah, I'm not reading that either. Sorry, these, these chats are really slowing down. What you have to say is no one can blame the manager. If anyone shows this well, uh, with the, those players to almost win against the team and do this well, what more could he have done, says Levi. Can you accept all three goals were valid instead of making excuses for your team? If United had those goals, then you wouldn't complain. Nope, not gonna, it's not going to accept it, Curry. I'll accept the loss. I'm not going to change my opinion. If Inanna did the same on Foden, it would have been given, says Kia. Um, come on, Mark. You can't honestly, honestly say we were robbed. Um, sorry, I'm having a real problem getting these up um, here. It's just ridiculously slow. Anthony was useless like a handbrake, says Alex. Uh, what is the deal with keeping a Diallo on the bench? Um, team didn't drop its head. I can't wait for the day when we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with City again, assuming they're not in the National League, says McElvis. Well, look, let's do the player ratings because I think that you know takes us into another area. And don't forget, we've got the fan forum. I'm sure they're going to have very different opinions to me. Um, Look, I took a few minutes. I normally go alive a lot quicker with my match reaction. I actually took a few minutes on it because I wanted to just calm down and try and find a bit of clarity um, just to make sure that, you know, maybe if I had made a mistake, I, I didn't make a mistake. Um, I, I, I'm not screaming and shouting like I was in the match. I will stand by this. I'm not. No one's going to change my mind, right? People can mock me. People can say you're deluded. People can say red tinted glasses. I don't mind. We've lost the game. So I don't win anything by staying on this, but I'll tell you now. Delo and Mainu both got free kicks. One at the end, one in the first half for a hand on the shoulder. They just stopped. They were like, and the referee went, yeah, foul. Rashford gets a hand on the shoulder. He stops and the referee says, play on. It, it, it's, it, it's a re, it's an inconsistency and it's a reassessment of the rules. For the last Five years, I've seen it. You get past the player. If they touch your arm and pull you back a little bit, you stop. It's a foul. It should have been a foul. I'm convinced it was a foul. I've seen it given in that game three times. Once for Man City, twice for us. The referee decided not to give it. I think it's a foul. I think it's a foul. And obviously Ten Hag thought it was a foul. I think a lot of our fans thought it was a foul. And um, they went up the other end and they scored. So it's contentious. At best, it's contentious. I heard some people say Rashford dived. There's no reason to dive in that situation. He's got the ball. He can stop. He can turn. He can give it back to Delo. He can try and run forward. Maybe Kyle Walker catches him. There's no need to dive. He's not in the penalty box. It's a foul, in my opinion. The second one, which is the tackle on Ganacho. I mean, I've, I, I just, I just, I've, I've watched it so many times, and I, I don't know what people are misunderstanding about my interpretation. He is at full pelt. He is off the ground. He's got his legs wide open. And yes, he gets the ball with his studs. But he follows through and absolutely clatters the player. I'm telling you now, if Casemiro sprints in on De Bruyne, gets the ball and follows through like that, it's a yellow card at best. Forget the red card. Forget, forget that. Maybe it would be a red card. I'm talking about whether it's reckless and whether it's enough for a free kick. And guess what? If it's a free kick, it's a penalty. The fact that VAR looked at it and went, fine, he got the ball. It baffles me. I'm, I'm, I'm actually baffled. 
So we're now going back to as long as you get the ball, it's not a foul. Well, hello, can we have um, can we have some of our red cards rescinded then? Because getting the ball, as we saw with Casemiro, Curtis Jones, Gusto, and many others, that's not the rule. The rule is, is the tackle out of control and endangering the opposition player? Well, watch it back. He's at full stretch. His legs are apart. He follows through and clatters the player. He gets the ball first, but that's not the rule. So I'm sorry. I know I'm banging my head against the brick wall and I know some people don't agree with me, but I know what the rule is. And I've, I've seen it and I saw it in real time and I've seen it in replay. I can't under... He's absolutely last man out of control and he follows through and he takes the player. And his legs are apart and actually he tackles the ball with his studs up. So I think it's a foul. I do. I think it's a foul. But at the very least, I think we should have got the fucking corner for it. And then they give the goal kick and they go and score at the other end. So look, I, 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 I don't care what anybody says. I'm not going to change my mind on that. And people can call me bitter and call me what they like. I, I've changed my mind on a lot of things when I've calmed down. I'm absolutely convinced it's a penalty. I'm absolutely convinced it was a foul on Rashford. And Amrabat makes the third mistake. But you know what? What happened to Old Trafford? We're playing a game. We're defending quite well. A cross comes in and we saw a penalty not given on the pitch where Michael Oliver on VAR says you might want to look at this. And we saw a penalty given against Hoyland on Rodri that we've never seen given before and we've never seen given again. So... Pardon me if I feel that there's a bit of an agenda when it's Man City against Man United because it seems to be one rule for one and one rule for the other. Um, and the Rashford one is worse than the penalty because he gives that foul on a Man City player, on Maynou and on Delo, but then doesn't give it, to, give it to Rashford and they go and score at the other end. So it's it's inconsistent. And um, yeah, it's, it's, dis it's disappointing. Uh, look, let's do the player ratings. Um, Andre Anana, I'd probably give him a 6.5. And I think you're right. Um, I thought he had a good game. I did think he had a good game. He had a big part to play in the goal. Um, he was very dominant in the air, which helped us. But at 1-1, I think he's got to make the penalty. And I think Anana's game, in a way, is very similar to Rashford's. That goal by Rashford's unbelievable. But then there's other things going on that, you know, he didn't do that well on. Um, so it's like, do you want to jump on the positive? Or do you want to jump on the reality? The positive is Anana played well. The, the negative is, I think he's got to do better on the goal that Foden scores. And if he does, you know, it, I don't know whether it would have been enough anyway. But it was much better than from Anana. I'd give him a 6.5. Uh, the low for me was a 7. I actually thought he played really well. When he went to left back, we were a lot better at left back. At right back, he was on his own a lot. He got double teamed a lot. Um, and I thought he did really, really well. Um... Also, going forward, he was probably our best attacking outlet, you know, apart from the first 20 minutes. Um, I think delo has been much improved recently and he would be a consideration for man of the match. I also thought Rafael Varane played really well. Um, I think I probably would give him my man of the match because obviously he stayed on for 90 minutes. This was a guy that was apparently going to miss the game against Forrest. He's played two games in a week, which apparently he can't do. And I suddenly find myself with Varane saying, well, why are we getting rid of him? Apparently, he can't play two games in a week. He's, he's, he's comfortably, comfortably our best centre-back. And today, he, you know, he basically pocketed Haaland. I mean, I know Haaland should have scored at the end of the first half. And I know Haaland scored, but that's on Amrabat. I thought Varane didn't deserve to be on the losing team today. I thought he played really, really well. Um, and, you know, what did I say at the start of the game? If you want to win this game, everybody's got to put a 7 out of 10 in. Well, Delo did. Anana nearly did. Varane did. Johnny Evans did. I thought Johnny Evans played brilliantly uh, in that game. I know he came off too soon, but I don't know whether that's injury or whatever. But um, I thought Johnny Evans played well. I'd give him a seven. Lindelof, look, I'd give him a six for effort, but it, it was a weakness. And it's not even his fault, really. It's a weakness. He's got to do better on the first goal. You can't just show Phil Foden in and let him have a shot. You can't do that. And... Um, Especially as a right-footed player, you know, if it was on the left-hand side, I sort of understand it. But as a right-footed player, you're on your strong side. You've got to do more to block that shot. And it's a bloody good goal by Foden. And he shouldn't be having the shot because we should have a foul. 
But Victor Lindelof still just got to do a bit better there. And and they exploited it. I mean, I think Foden had a lot of success down that side, didn't he? Um, Casemiro, probably a 6.5 for me. A 5.8? What? I mean, it's almost like people are blaming bad decisions and, you know, our, our incompetent attack on a defensive unit that worked its arse off for, for 90 minutes. I thought Casemiro, easily a 6.5, made some good tackles. I think he got tired in the second half. There's no doubt about that. Um, but no, I think Casemiro was very, very important uh, and would have been a consideration for man of the match. Uh, also, Kobe Maynou, I'd give him a 6.5. I mean, this is ridiculous. I think it's just because we've lost. Yeah, I thought Kobe Maynou, for his age, uh, intelligent, um, made some good interceptions again, was good on the ball. Um, yeah, helped us compact. I thought Kobe Maynou had a good game. McTominay, really five for me. Um Look, I, I would have picked him because of the set pieces. We don't have a lot of height in the team. But, I mean, it really was just redundant at so much. No good on the ball. Um, lost Rodri multiple times. Um, I didn't really understand his role in the team. And I don't think I don't think it was tactical. I just don't think he, he can play it. I, 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 just, I just thought he was an absolute passenger, apart from set pieces. Um, poor performance. And the same with Bruno. Look, I, I thought it was a bad performance. I really did. Uh, I thought he was good in the first 15 minutes and then just fell apart. Um, the sad thing is, what, what, what are you going to do? We've got nobody else. Nobody else. And yeah, I mean, this is the captain of the team. One of the best number 10s in the country. And our game fell apart in the attack. Like, there were so many opportunities in the second half to, you know, actually get in behind them. And we're missing the pass. I saw Rashford two or three times ready to go, missing the pass. Um, it's, again, it's if there's one thing that, about Bruno that's consistent about, at the moment, it's his below par performances. Um, yeah, Ganacho again, a five. Just really struggled today. Really did struggle today. I don't think he played well against Forrest in the midweek. Um, he's had a couple of really below par performances. Um, I sort of felt for him a little bit because there was nothing to attack. So you've got to defend. I don't think that's his game. But yeah, it wasn't a good performance from him. Rashford had given him a 6.5 for the goal. But I'd be honest and say, again, after the 20, first 20 minutes, much the same as Bruno, he, his game just fell off. Um, and it's interesting, isn't it? You know, he scored that goal. And I was like, you know what? He's done that interview. He scored that goal. What a way to answer. But there was that, I even said it on the watch along. There's a long way to go in this game. There's a long way to go in this game. And it's about a 99, it's about a 90 minute performance. And we didn't get it. We didn't get it. And, um, you know, my message to Rashford would be, well, look, I don't think you're ever going to lose the ability to score a goal. You've got a good shot on you, but it's everything else. You know, there was a lot of things that, again, were just missing from your game. And the question is confusing. Why? Why is it that, you know, those things are still missing? Um, and, you know, people, he said, he said it in the interview himself, I'm not going to have people questioning my commitment, but I, I, people are questioning the performance. And, and again, it was a confusing one because I think he should have been one-on-one. -on -one. And if it's 2-0, it's maybe it's a different game. I think he should be one-on-one -on -one and he knows he should. Um, the chance on the back post, I think he should have done a little bit better, although it was harder. But yeah, I, I'd say 6.5. Kambwala, I thought, did OK coming on in a difficult circumstance. Um, Anthony, I'd give him a four. I thought it was absolutely shit. To come on in a game like that and put in a performance like that, you know, it was terrible. It was really, really terrible. Uh, Amrabat, three. Just, just. I thought he did quite well against Forrest, but I did say in that game, if I'm an Everton or a or or a or a Crystal Palace, I may have a look at him. But I mean, that's just that's just you know what? If you're Rafael Varane and you're a Nana and you're Delo and you see that, you feel like wringing his neck. You're like fucking hell. You know, we've worked our arse off. Two one. It's still a loss, but you know, at least as a defence, we can go. You know. We've been a bit unlucky with the refereeing decisions, but 3-1, that's on you, mate. And it's just not good enough. Uh, Forsen, I didn't even know he came on, to be honest. Um, I really didn't. Uh, Ten Hag today, look, he's going to get a low score. I'm going to give him a five. Um, and actually, I, I agree. You know, I think, that, I think that's a fair score. I think I'd give him a five because, honestly, I think he got his tactics right. 
I don't think there's anything else he could do. I don't think there's anything he can do around selection. I think playing Bruno as the false nine was a good idea to get more bodies in the midfield. I thought that was right. I thought he got his defence right. Lindelof was a weakness, but what else are you going to do? The bench subs were right. What else are you going to do? You've got you've got to make those subs. So I think he's, his hands are tied behind his back, of course. So I can't be too critical on him. But the reason I wouldn't give it an average and I'd give it a five is because you still have to look at it as a coach. And, you know, I've been a coach. You don't have to be a coach. You can watch the game. I'm still looking at it and I'm going, as a coach, I've still got to take responsibility for the fact that the, the front four have completely and utterly fucked that game up with their inability to create chances in the second half. Like, we 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 didn't get in their box to create a chance in the second half in, in open play. And we should be doing that. Um, and the reason I'd drop a from a six to a five for Ten Hag is that it's not even about today. Man City are better than us. But this is why we lost to Fulham. The front four give the ball away too much. And it happened against Forest on Wednesday night. The front four give the ball away too much. And we did it again today. They are they are so careless with the ball. And it really, really hurts us. So I would mark Ten Hag down a point for that. Um, look, I just want the Everton game. I think that I know Gary Neville said, you know, it's games like this where Ten Hag's going to be judged. I completely disagree. I don't think you lose your job because you lose to Man City with that team. Um, I think you get judged on your home games and you get judged on the games that we've got against Brentford away, Everton at home. They're the games. Go and win them games. I think he's safe. Go and lose those games. I think he's in trouble. I don't think that... Um, I don't... I, 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 look, I think Ten Hag's job's in danger. I, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. But I don't think today is a, a day where you start going, look, if you Ten Hag out, you Ten Hag out. If you Ten Hag in, you Ten Hag in. I don't think today changes that because it's, it was never going to be that type of game. Man City were always going to win. Everybody predicted that. It was going to be about, you know, how we set up how the players performed. And I'll go back to what I said before. You're never going to win a game like that if you're carrying passengers. Everybody has to play at least 7 out of 10. And unfortunately, when we go back through those player ratings, four or five players didn't. So you're never going to get a result. You're never going to get a result. Amrabat was given a hard ball to control in the middle of four players with no option to pass and it got nicked off him. Well, he should have kicked it out, Hamza. I'm sorry, that's the difference between a top player and a, and a crap player. He should have kicked it out. Can't take player advice from Ten Hag anymore. Uh, Rashford is a luxury player. Time to move on, says Terence. Thank you very much. Uh, Anana couldn't save the second one due to Lindelof slide tackling in an awkward time. Also give Varane whatever he wants. He's a Rolls Royce. Well, he was your man of the match. So smash a like on the video for Varane. Um, there's a lot of people talking about a lot of stuff in the chat. I've had my say. I'm not changing my opinion on the refereeing decisions. I, I, I'm convinced I'm right. I don't care if I'm in the minority. I'm absolutely happy with it. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Fan Forum has started and I'm sure you'll get your variety of opinion on there that will be different from mine, I'm sure, and it might match up with some of yours and that's fine. It's all about opinion. You don't have to agree with mine. I don't care if you do or you don't. I just come on here and I'll give you my honest opinion on it. Um, thanks everybody for watching. And um, let's get over to the fan forum. I'll speak to you all in a bit. Take care. Stay safe. And um, yeah, I'm gutted. I'm sure you're gutted as well. But um, it's just the way things roll, isn't it? Speak to you in a bit.